Please work. Everything rides on this turning on. Countless sleepless nights, thousands of dollars, 1,200 hours, 119 prototypes that weren't good enough. And now I have four months of savings left to make this business work. I'm kind of praying that the algorithm actually likes this video, meaning you're new here. So let me give you a quick recap. It all started three years ago when I started developing TMJ disorder, basically just a up jaw. It led to constant lockjaw and pain and there's no cure, but I did find critical tools for relieving it, heat and massage. The only problem was that I couldn't find a device that combined the two for use on facial muscles. I've always had a dream to bring an idea into a full-on product, so I decided to give it a shot. Over the last 10 months, I've learned how to design PCBs, build over 100 prototypes, created a brand and a website, and managed to fund everything through organic pre-orders. It all left off last episode when I finally finished ordering all the components for production, but the clock is ticking. I'm moving to DC in a month, which is why my goal is to start shipping out these MyTMJ pens by August. Obviously the number one thing holding us back is not having a hundred working units. But until all the parts that we ordered last episode come in, we're kind of stuck here. But I'm not just gonna sit on my hands because there are still three major things that we have to do before shipping. Rewrite the code, finalize the casing, and figure out packaging. And that'll hopefully take just enough time to get us through these lead times. Let's not pretend like you actually want to hear about firmware updates, so let me make it quick. There were pretty much four changes. To account for thermistor failure, I had to put in a couple conditions that checked if the temperature readings made sense. In case of a microcontroller crash, I added a watchdog timer, which basically needs to reset every two seconds or else it completely restarts the microcontroller. Last episode, I switched up the pins so I could use interrupts for button presses. So I have to add that into code. And same goes for PWMing the motor which now I can do using the built-in Arduino functions. I made reprogramming super easy with this pogo pin tag connector. It's actually wild that I have to be shipping by the end of the month and the casing isn't even finalized yet. In fact, I haven't even settled on colors yet. You've probably seen my gray or black versions from previous episodes, but honestly, I only made those because I had those filaments on hand. In reality, I want this thing to stand out a bit. You know, when a patient goes to their physical therapist or chiropractor and they pull this out in the clinic, I want them to ask about it. So I kind of tried to go designer mode here. I thought, hmm, what kind of emotions do I want to evoke? Who is the avatar? If I want this thing to stand out, I have to use complementary colors. But at the same time, I want the device to feel somewhat soothing, meaning I can't have super bright colors either. Most people with TMJ are women, but I don't want it to be designed in a feminine way that makes it seem like a sex toy, right? This pretty much dialed me right into the pastel color palette, out of which I picked light blue and sort of light almond. But believe it or not, I managed to fail even with just picking colors. First of all, 3D printing filament colors are a bigger constraint than I expected, especially with ABS, which I need to withstand higher temperatures. I looked everywhere for a nice pastel blue, but all of them are this teal instead. Same goes for the pinkish beige. The really nice matte ones only come in PLA. Dude, look at this shit. Disgusting. It looks like orange cream soda or something. So I decided to change things up a bit. Instead of almond, I'll go a little darker with brown ABS, and I can use the light teal as an accent color. For now, that's much better. When I find a better light blue, I'll look into making that the primary. But we're not done. I decided to ship the first 100 units without professional graphic panels. So we're keeping this style of button cover, but the problem is that there's a little gap under it that lets it press down. Little gaps are ugly, so let's figure out a solution. Keeping in mind print orientation, I came up with this geometry that hides the button while letting it be pressed. Getting a good clicky feeling was a lot harder than I expected though, and took over 14 tries. It's unfortunate now though that we're gonna have to be post-processing this part, since I couldn't figure out a way to do it without supports. And finally, to make sure that the thermistor doesn't come out of the metal tip, I extended the casing to block the hole once it's screwed on. This may seem like a small change, but the thermistor coming out could easily lead to the tip overheating and burning someone. First things first, let me just say that I find packaging to be extremely important. When a random person buys your product, that first interaction can make or break their perception of value. That means ideally I have a sleek, rigid, slow opening box with soft foam and minimalist graphics. But as always, there's a big problem. 
I need to ship these pre-orders by August. And one thing I know about beautiful packaging is that it takes several months to make and ship. Plus, their minimum order quantities are a bit higher than I'd like, since there's basically no chance that I don't make any design changes after getting feedback from initial customers. So here's my plan. I'm gonna take advantage of a powerful weapon, being a super small business. Because the first batch is only 100 units, I can do things that even Apple can't do with their packaging. I can tell my story and even handwrite cards. I'm hoping that the personal touch charm will excuse the fact that instead of a luxurious unboxing experience, they'll get a cardboard box wrapped with a big sticker. Here's my sticker design, by the way. Nothing crazy, but it has a clear product photo, company story, and important information. All right, well, uh, now that that's ordered, all we can do is uh, sit here and pray that our packages come soon. Wow, and almost as if I had scripted it, the Chinese shipping god started answering my calls. First came the thermistors, then the motors, then the heating elements, then the batteries, the custom tips, packing labels, business cards, and finally, the big kahuna, our circuit boards. It truly felt like Christmas, except instead of gifts, they're packages that can create or destroy my dreams of selling my own product before they even begin. Well, let's open them up. While that's happening, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed and shared this video with anyone you know who's interested in engineering, product design, and building a business. It takes a surprisingly long time to make these videos along with everything else I do, and I think they'd be interesting to a lot more people than they're reaching right now. All that begging aside, taking out the first circuit board felt insane. Like, I designed that, and now I have a big box full of them. But the excitement only lasted so long before the fear kicked in. What if they don't work? What if I made a stupid mistake like I always do? Let's go! All right, let's build and let's shift.